A good 3D platformer only needs a few key ingredients to almost guarantee success. A lovable hero, a nice variety of levels to wander around and collect stuff in, and simple gameplay with frequent breakaway refreshments to keep players on their toes. Sadly, Cliven Wrench is missing some key ingredients that stop it from bouncing to the dizzying heights of those that came before, but it's not a total washout and there is some fun to be had. Cliven Wrench takes players on a time-hopping adventure after the big bad guy, Dr. Daukus, and his sidekick, Olga Chestikov, rub off with the time travel blueprints. It's up to Clive the Rabbit and Wrench the Monkey to track them down and put an end to their mischief. It's standard silly stuff, and it's not winning any writing awards, that's for sure, but it serves the game by allowing players to explore levels set in different time periods and locations, ranging from old-timey London, ancient Egypt, a mob-run casino town, and more. It's a fine concept, though the story leaves a lot to be desired. The heroic titular duo are a fine pairing, with Clive the Rabbit being the main character, tasked with running, jumping and spin attacking enemies, while Wrench dutifully sits on his buddy's back and waits to be slung around like helicopter rotors, to give Clive a gliding ability. Poor Wrench actually doesn't do much more than that, and neither character is given much actual characterization outside of their nightmare fuel cutscenes. It's a missed opportunity to turn the characters from being pawns in the player's game to being fun critters worth knowing and caring about. It doesn't help that all the dialogue in the game is presented in text, with that annoying me 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 vocalisation made popular by Banjo-Kazooie and later Ukulele. The modern player is a visual being. We notice graphics first and gameplay later. Cliven Wrench does not impress on the visual front, and the dated visual makeup sets the tone for the rest of the adventure. It doesn't look bad per se, but it doesn't do much to set itself apart from its peers. The characters and the worlds look decent enough, but there's an air of PS3 era around it all with flat lighting, inconsistent world interactions, and some downright awful cinematics with animation pulled from a cheap Russian kids cartoon. The levels are hit and miss, with some being genuinely good looking and fun to move around in. Others, however, and I'm pointing directly at the mob town level, are an actual eyesore and a bore. I couldn't wait to be done with that level, and once I left it, I vowed never to return. Sadly, I had to, to make progress. There are 11 levels in total, and progression is locked behind collectibles. In each level there are hundreds of coloured pocket watches to collect, as well as 10 magic stones. It's the stones that dictate the progression, as you can only move from one world to the next by beating the previous world's boss. However, while you're free to explore the level, the boss for that level is in a separate area that is locked unless you have the set amount of stones. This means you really have to get to work in each level and have a good mooch around to find as many stones as possible. For the most part, it's fairly simple, and each level follows a similar structure. For example, each level will have you needing to find 5 lost characters for a reward, 5 keys to open a safe, and so on. Other levels lean heavily into the platforming, and reward players for their patience, and you will need a lot of patience, by granting a stone for jumping and gliding to the top of a location. I can't say that the platforming did much for me though, and I came close to turning my DualSense controller into a permanent fixture of my wall decor on a few occasions. It doesn't help that the controls are a little iffy, and I never really felt that I had that player-character connection. Jumps would register late, grabs onto ledges would fail, and sometimes I would sprint with Clive only to hit a small obstacle, which would send the little bunny bounding through the air. The boss levels are particularly poor. They could have been cut entirely from the game. They range from being annoyingly difficult to ridiculously easy. For instance, one early boss had me running around a massive casino roulette table while the boss threw waves of enemies at me. Defeating the enemies took off a third of her health. The final wave of baddies, though, had old-school gangster Tommy guns, which are hard to avoid. And given that Clive's only offensive move is a spin attack, which means you need to get close, and getting close means getting smacked around is inevitable. I had to go through this boss level a dozen times before I finally got lucky and beat it. Getting lucky shouldn't be the way to get ahead though, should it? On the other hand, the Egypt level's boss, Cleocatra, was a cakewalk. All I had to do was run and jump my way through a fairly basic platforming section to get to the top of her pyramid, which then transitioned to a cutscene of the boss lady walking backwards until she walked off the edge of the pyramid. 
And that was it. No spectacular battle, no real challenge. Cliven Ranch is inconsistent from start to finish, with some levels being good fun and others being poor chores. Combat is lacklustre, and the platforming can be very annoying, though in the wider levels without the need for pinpoint precision, Clive's limited abilities serve their purpose. It's important to remember though that this is a solo effort from a one-man development team, and it's been in the works for over a decade. Unfortunately, that decade has caught up with Cliven Ranch, and some things that may have been a good idea long ago no longer fit the current landscape especially with the likes of Mario Odyssey and the recent-ish Spyro and Crash remakes. And that is the end of this review. Thank you, as always, for watching. If you enjoyed this review and found it useful, please do us a solid by hitting the like and subscribe buttons below. Also, give the bell icon a nudge so that you get notified whenever we've got new stuff for you to watch. I've been Chris, you've been gorgeous, and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, cheers my dears.